badly exposed footage. It happens to all of us. Luckily, in the higher-end Lumix cameras like the G9, GH5 and GH6, we have Waveform. It's an incredibly useful tool. If you know how it works, it makes it so easy to judge your exposure. So, let me show you how it works, how to use it with different color profiles and how it's different from histogram. Let's talk about it. If you're new here, I'm Sebastian and welcome to the channel. Not all cameras have waveform, but one of the reasons I use Lumix cameras, the G9 and GH6 in particular, is the fact that they do have waveform. I use it all the time and prefer it over any other exposure tool. So what exactly is waveform? The waveform monitor is a tool that displays the brightness levels or luminance values of your image in a graphical way. Information about the colors in the image is not being shown in the waveform, at least not in the camera's waveform tool. It works with a scale in IRE from 0 to 100 that has its origin in analog video signals where a certain IRE level represents a voltage. With digital video it is now being used to describe brightness levels. 0 to 100 IRE or 0 to 100% is being used interchangeably. They both mean the same. Zero on the scale means completely black and 100 on the scale is completely white. These are the clipping points. Anything below zero or over 100 will have no detail. Although that's not entirely true anymore. I'll get to that in a second. So the waveform is basically a frame within which we need to keep our brightness levels when we expose an image. Now there are situations in which you can actually expose your highlights beyond 100 IRE. The parts of the image that are in this region over 100 are called super whites. One situation where you may want to make use of this super whites region is if you're delivering or displaying your videos on an HDR TV or display. Or you can use it to get some extra highlight information back in post. So the big difference between waveform and the histogram is that the waveform gives you an actual representation of your image in the form of waves that correspond to a certain IRE level, making it very easy to see what the exposure of a particular part of your image is. Looking from left to right at the waveform is the same as looking at the actual image from left to right. The histogram, on the other hand, gives you a rough idea of the exposure of the entire image. It doesn't tell you anything about IRE level, and it doesn't tell you which part of your image is over or underexposed. For example, a peak on the right side of the histogram means that there are a lot of highlights in the image, but they could be anywhere in the image not necessarily on the right side of the image. I personally never use histogram. Waveform gives a much more detailed picture of exposure levels. Now that we know what waveform is, let's see how we can use this tool to expose an image. First, we need to consider what kind of profile we're in. A Rec. 709 profile, such as the natural profile, will be different from Vlog L in terms of using the waveform to expose. I've now set my G9 up in the natural profile, which is a Rec. 709 profile. If we look at the shot, me talking, and I move my head around in the frame, you can see the luminance values that represent my face moving in the, fa in the waveform. In a Rec. 709 profile, skin tones should be exposed around 70 IRE or percent. If we look at the waveform, and see where the luminance values of my face are, it's around 50 IRE. So let's raise the exposure. I'm going to do that by adding light, but it can of course also be done by opening up your aperture or raising the ISO. Look at what happens in the waveform when I bring up the exposure. My face is now correctly exposed for a Rec. 709 profile, around 70 IRE. For the darkest area of the image, 
it is a good idea not to have anything in your image below 10 or 15 percent or IRE on your waveform and highlights clip at 100. Let's have a look at exposing vlog L with the help of the waveform. Exposing vlog L is a bit different from exposing a Rec 709 profile with the most important difference being that highlights clip at 80 IRE. We can see that on the waveform by raising the exposure in this shot. I'm going to use a flashlight for this. And when I shine this at the lens, you can see the waveform move and you can see where the flashlight is. And you can see that it hits a ceiling at 80 IRE. That's where it clips. For skin tones in Vlog L, the values should be between 42 and 55 IRE, depending on the color of the skin. So let's now apply what we've learned to this shot, which is obviously not correctly exposed. By looking at the waveform and raising the exposure, we can see the waves in the waveform go up. And because we now know where my face is represented in the waveform, we can focus on that area until it sits somewhere between 42 and 55 IRE or percent, where skin tones need to be at. One thing to keep in mind is that choosing how to expose an image is also a creative decision. We can always ignore all the rules to get a desired look. Also, while many people seem to always want to raise the shadows and have lots of details in the shadows, I myself sometimes want the shadows to be black because it suits the scene. The same goes for highlights. Sometimes it's okay or even desirable to have some blown out highlights in the shot. The important thing here is that they are your decisions. Because this tool, the waveform, tells you exactly what you need to know to make those decisions. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. I hope this video was helpful. If so, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel and maybe hit that notification bell. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.